Hey everybody, Mike here with Delta Faucet. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install a Delta Faucet R4707, a deck mount rough for Roman tubs. Now, with this type of rough, the thickness of your deck can change the installation steps. So take a quick minute to estimate what your total deck thickness is. And what I mean by total deck thickness is from the bottom of your framing to the top of your finished deck surface, anything like tile or a solid stone. Now, if the thickness of your deck is more than two and a half inches, you have what we call a thick deck. I have another video specific to thick deck installations, and that's the one you're gonna to wanna to go watch. Now, if on the other hand, your deck is standard, meaning the thickness of those same deck materials is less than two and a half inches, then you're in the right place, so stay tuned. And one last note, I'll be covering how to install this both with and without a hand shower, so you can follow along either way. Now, typically, you'd only be tackling this project if you're doing a bathroom remodel that's been taken all the way down to studs, or you're doing some new construction. If you're tackling that complicated of a project, I'm guessing you have some DIY experience already, but just keep in mind that every install is unique and building codes are different everywhere. So if you run into an issue or there are any steps with the installation that you're uncomfortable with, I definitely recommend bringing in the help of a professional. Also, you're gonna need to sweat some copper lines in this install. So be sure you're comfortable with all of those steps as well. But if you feel good with it all, then let's carry on and talk about the tools needed for the installation. For our installation today, you'll need a power screwdriver, a tape measure, a level, an adjustable wrench, a pencil, a one and a half inch hole saw, a utility knife, safety goggles or glasses, and then whatever plumbing is appropriate for your water supply. Okay, so grab those tools and let's get started. Okay, so here we are with the bathtub that we're gonna be working on today. Now, you'll notice right off the bat that I've removed the outside cover and also turned the bathtub around to make it a little bit easier to work on and also easier to show you guys exactly what we're doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is to determine the location of our valves. Now, there's really no rule exactly about where this needs to go, but there are certainly some considerations we wanna keep in mind when doing this. The first is the overall design and function of where we want the valves to sit. Second, I also wanna make sure I'm choosing a location that has a nice flat spot so when we put the finished trim on the valves, it has a good spot to sit down nice and flush with the deck surface. And finally, I think it's a great idea to take a look underneath where we'll be drilling our holes just to make sure there's no obstructions that could cause some issues when we're connecting our finished plumbing a little bit way down the road. Okay, so once I've got my location set, next I've gone ahead and put some tape down to protect my deck surface. So while I'm working on it, I'm not gonna damage it because that's the last thing we wanna do. Next, I can start locating the positions of my holes. Now, there's a couple measurements here I want you to keep in mind. The first is we wanna make sure the distance between our two end valves, those are where you're gonna control your hot and cold water, is between 10 to 16 inches. So I always think it's a good idea to stay within that range, but you probably wanna check your finished trim material if you have it, just to make sure you're meeting the minimum distance requirements. Now, you'll also notice that I've drilled a fourth hole here, and that's gonna be for my hand shower. It's totally okay if you have the version that doesn't have the hand shower. The only difference is obviously you're not gonna be drilling this fourth hole. Now, the location of the hand shower hole needs to be within 16 inches on center with where I'm gonna be locating my spout. It is possible to locate this further away if you want. Delta offers an additional hose that gives you seven foot of length to connect the spout to the hand shower itself. So that'll give you a little bit more flexibility about where you exactly you locate that on your deck. Okay, so once you've determined all those locations, you go ahead and drill your holes through your deck. You wanna use an inch and a half wide drill bit to do so and be very, very careful as you come down from the top of your deck all the way through, not to damage anything above or below the deck you're working on. Once you've done that, come on back here and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we have our holes drilled, we can move on to installing our end valves and our spout adapter. Now the first thing we're gonna do is remove these cardboard tubes from the valve body itself. To do this, you're gonna turn this washer at the top 90 degrees until it fits in with the valve body and you can lift it up and off. Now it is possible that this washer could be stuck in place a little bit and you'll notice that there's two screws that have a flat head down in there. If you loosen those up, that should release the washer and make it much easier to go ahead and pull off. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off my valve body like so, set that to the side, and now I can remove my cardboard tube and go ahead and discard it. Once I've got that done, I wanna talk about the end valve a little bit more. Now, here I have the cold side, and I can tell because it doesn't have a little marking sticker on it that indicates it's the hot side. You notice one spot has a corrugated tube to it, and the other side is a smooth tube. Now, the corrugated tube is gonna be the one that's gonna to connect to our spout, and the smooth one is gonna be connected to our supply lines. So just keep that in mind to make sure you're getting the hot and the cold on the right side in relation to your spout. 
So for me, my spout's gonna be in the center hole here, so I know my hot's on the left. Again, remember I have this turned around backwards, and my cold is gonna be on the right side of the spout. So since this is the cold side, I go ahead and locate it with my corrugated tube towards the center, and making sure this little plastic piece here called the stop is facing to the right as if I was in the tub. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up from the bottom side of my hole here. So now I can take my washer, drop it back down over my end valve body here, you will notice there's a little slot below the threads that the washer slots into, and then I can line up the indentations on the washer with my jack screws and drop everything down tight to my deck. Now, if you've done this right, the screws will be down below the deck level, and also the washer will be fully contacting the deck all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the same exact steps for my other end valve, my hot side, and also for my spout adapter. All right, so I've got my end valves, my spout adapter in place, so now I can move on to installing my hand shower nest. Now again, if you're installing the version that doesn't have the hand shower, feel free to skip ahead. So the hand shower nest looks very similar to the other ones, except you'll notice it has a big plastic piece on top. And this plastic piece has a longer side and then also a bevel to it. Now if you can imagine, this is where your hand shower is gonna sit down into and it's gonna give it an angle to make sure the water's gonna flow into the tub. So when installing this, I wanna make sure that plastic piece with the bevel and the long side are facing into the tub. To pull this apart, it's gonna happen just like the way it did with the metal washers where I turn it 90 degrees, pull it off the top, then I can remove the cardboard tube, set that off to the side. Now this is gonna mount exactly the same way the other ones did where I pull it up from the bottom and then reattach the cap. However, I do wanna point out how this is gonna to come together from down below. So you'll notice in the bottom of the plastic cap is a keyed opening where I can move the nest body into that opening there and then turn this 90 degrees to lock it into place so the holes on the bottom of the nest cap are even with my jack screws. So, once I've got that, I can put my nest body up from the bottom here, and then just like before, I'm gonna insert my plastic cap on the top so it nests down into the key, like so, and then turn it 90 degrees to lock it into place. And then drop it all down onto my deck. Now again, I just wanna verify that the long side and the bevel are facing into the tub, and that those holes in my nest cap are lined up with my jack screws down below. Okay, now I've got all four things in place, we can go on and move ahead to tightening everything up. All right, now we're ready to start tightening up our end valves and our spout adapter. But before we do that, there's a few things I wanna keep in mind. First is I wanna make sure I'm keeping my valves square with my tub. And I can tell what square is by using the flat sides of the end valves and the spout adapter as reference, making sure that it remains parallel with the inside of the tub. Second, the way this works is there's two jack screws that are gonna be tightening up a plate from the bottom. So as we turn those screws clockwise to tighten things up, that plate will be moving up from the bottom and eventually contacting the bottom of the deck. So while I'm tightening those screws, I wanna make sure I'm doing them evenly on both sides and also not over tightening them when it starts contacting the bottom of the deck because I could put too much pressure on it and cause some damage. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna start with one valve, working my way back and forth between either jack screw, and that will help get everything nice and snug. Okay, so just for visual reference here, you can see that as I'm tightening these jack screws, that dimple plate is gonna start moving towards the bottom of the deck to tighten everything up. Another thing I wanna keep an eye on here is I wanna make sure that as I tighten one screw, the other jack screw is gonna be moving up through the deck. So I wanna make sure that's not getting caught on the bottom of the washer on the bottom of the deck as I do that. Okay, I'm happy with the position and alignment of all my valves, so we're ready to move on. That really wraps up everything for the rough valve install on top of the deck, so you can go ahead and remove your protective tape. Next, we're gonna move back below and start doing some of our finished plumbing connections. Now, if you have the hand shower, the first thing we're gonna do is connect our leader hose to our hand shower nest. 
Now to do this, we're gonna remove this black pressure cap just by unscrewing it. And I think it's a great idea to always check on the inside to make sure you still have that little gasket in place. Okay, once you've got that, you can go ahead and feed your tube up from the bottom of the nest through the center and then reinstall your test cap from the top, screwing it back into the top of your leader hose. And this should screw in there very easy, so just be careful not to cross thread it and tighten it down enough that you get a nice watertight seal. And the cap will keep it from falling back down through the nest. All right, now that I have that connected, we can move on to connecting our end valve to our spout. Now to do that, I'm gonna use this included T and fit it over the bottom of my spout input and then bend both my hot and my cold sides to the T itself. Now again, these corrugated tubes are designed to be bent, but we still wanna be very, very careful that we're not gonna kink them or break them in any way when we're bending them to the spout itself. Once I get that connected, I can go ahead and move on to connecting my hot and my cold input sides, and that'll about wrap things up for my finished plumbing. So go ahead and get everything connected and then come back here and we'll move on to pressure testing. Okay, I've got my tub in position. I've made all my final plumbing connections. So now what I'm gonna do is pressure test the system. I'm gonna turn on the supplies to the hot and the cold side, and I also wanna make sure both of my end valves are in the full open position. Now to do this, I just check the top of the end valve that has a valve stem on it, making sure that the flat edge of the valve stem is facing towards the middle of the tub. What this means is that water is gonna be running not only towards my end valves, but also through my spout adapter, and then also through that leader hose if you have that hand shower installed. Now I'm gonna check all of my connection points to see if I see any evidence of leaking because this is really gonna be my last chance to correct any of those issues. If everything looks good, then you can go ahead and move on to installing your finished trim. And that about wraps things up for the install of the R4707 deck mounted Roman tub roof. I hope that installation went well for you. And remember, you can always contact Delta Faucet's customer service team. They're more than happy to help.